From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. A person found dead in connection with a murder investigation that stemmed from Billings to West Yellowstone. Billings police say early this morning, officers responded to a home on the 100 block of Avenue B to find a dead female. Officers say they located the body under suspicious circumstances and detectives with the investigations division were called in to process the scene. This is the latest death that's being investigated in connection with the homicide of a 64 year old woman, Roxanne Watson, just five days earlier at a home on the 1000 block of Avenue B. From here, the investigation spans to West Yellowstone, where 22 year old Harry Porter and 28 year old Erica Miller were both found dead in a wooded area near Highway 191 from an apparent murder suicide. Both are accused of strangling and beating Watson. Billings police say at this time they're not looking for an additional victim or any suspects. Well, today is the first full day of deliberations in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Jurors are deciding if the former police officer caused George Floyd's death last May. Michael George has the latest from Minneapolis. Jurors are looking at three weeks of testimony from 45 witnesses to decide if Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd when he knelt on his neck for more than nine minutes. The charges are second degree murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. The defense needs just one juror on its side to force a mistrial. They're looking for doubt. They are not looking for proof that is going to be on their side. They just want to find a doubt to get a hung jury. During lengthy closing arguments Same. Monday, the state asked jurors to use common sense and to believe their eyes. The defendant abandoned his values, abandoned the training, and killed a man. The defense argued Chauvin only did what any reasonable officer would do and repeated a theory that Floyd died of a heart attack or drug overdose. Were there other contributing factors? that were not the natural result of Mr. Chauvin's acts. The drug ingestion, right? the bad heart, the diseased heart, the hypertension. Here in downtown, businesses are already boarded up and Minneapolis schools are switching to virtual learning tomorrow ahead of the verdict. The protests have been peaceful so far, but the city is bracing for the possibility that could change. The president of the NAACP feels like the prosecution made a good case. The expert witnesses came up and say he was killed because of Derek Chauvin. There is no objection to that. I don't think anyone objectively looking at that would deny that Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd. Chauvin faces up to 40 years in prison if convicted. Michael George, CBS News, Minneapolis. And the 12 jurors are diverse with six people of color. The jury's also on the younger side, most younger than 50 years old. Well, the White House says President Biden will deliver a statement after the verdict is announced. Biden has been in touch with Minnesota's governor and civil rights leaders about the case. Biden also believes there's a place for peaceful protests. The president previously said he believes George Floyd was murdered, but didn't give an opinion about the prosecution. In Cascade County right now, there are about 92 detention center officers. The county is looking for more. So they're set to hold a meet and greet with the public on May 2nd for anyone who wants to apply and learn a little bit more about working in a detention center. We are actively recruiting people to come work in our jail. We have we have slots open. We just went through some awesome, awesome negotiations. We, you know, with the administration and the union, we work together as a team. And, you know, we've really opened the door for people to come in here. And the meet and greet is scheduled for 12.30 to 4 on May 2nd at Schulte's Coffee House in Great Falls. All right, that weather out there continues to amaze us and keep us guessing. We are now turning <laughs> over to Miller Robson, who is going to try and 
do his best to guess what's happening. Well, things are going to start to improve, Andrea. We do have it's a weak area of higher pressure coming in from the north. It's a ridge that will get stronger as we get into Wednesday and Thursday afternoon before we see another system come in. Let's take a look. We still have some snow around the uh, state near Great Falls, Helena, even in Billings, seeing a few flakes down there in northern parts of Wyoming up there in the northeast corner of the state. Temperatures mainly in the 30s. We are seeing some 40s though along the High Line, 46 in Kalispell, 45 down in Missoula State Capitol, uh, 38 in Helena. Our cold spot looks like a uh, butte sitting at about 29 down in Sheridan. We're at 31. Let me tell you about that high pressure. Now it's slowly making its way uh, in from the north as we go along today, starting to see clearer skies. Lots of sunshine for your Wednesday into early Thursday, and then we have another cold front that's going to drop in from the north as we get into Thursday and Friday, and that means not only rain, but a chance at more snow. I have details coming up. All right, Miller, thanks. After a four day halt to the session because a lobbyist tested positive for COVID-19, the legislature is set to return to its full scheduled day today. But last week, Republican leadership canceled both the House and Senate floor sessions on Friday and Monday. GOP leaders say they took the action to give contact tracers time to determine how many people came in contact with that infected person and see who should quarantine. It's the first time since the session began in January that it's been canceled because of COVID-19. A few committees continue to meet, though, virtually. Republican leadership also says less than a dozen lawmakers had close contact with that lobbyist. They have not tested positive, but they are in quarantine. Veterans, spouses and caregivers are urged to sign up to get a COVID-19 vaccine in Montana. Out of 47,000 veterans enrolled in the Montana VA healthcare system, over 8,000 are completely vaccinated. Officials say they're seeing a challenge in reaching a population that's hesitant or hasn't made a priority yet to come in and get vaccinated. Walk-in appointments are available for veterans at Montana's VA COVID clinics on a first come first serve basis. The Missoula Health Department launched a community wide campaign to create a positive atmosphere surrounding the vaccination experience. The goal of the come together campaign is to educate the public and eliminate some of those concerns. The health department is holding daily and weekly drawings for prizes at Lucky's Market for those getting vaccinated and they're working with businesses to offer perks. The State Department expanded its do not travel list of countries the agency believes are too risky to travel Right now, the updated guidance puts about 80% of countries worldwide now on the list and travel restrictions already prevented most Americans from traveling to many of those countries. The change was made due to existing assessments by the CDC. The Green New Deal will call for the country to reduce its dependence on fossil fuels and create high paying green energy jobs. Democrats will reintroduce sweeping climate change legislation today. The plan includes a proposal to help reduce pollution and ensure clean water supply. This version, though, will still need support of at least 10 Republican senators in order for it to pass. All right, still ahead on the new news today, we're taking you inside a mining museum that is expanding its history while adding live music and outdoor workshops. But of course, Miller is back in with a look at that statewide forecast.